Never waste a good crisis. And when it comes to the economic crisis, don't waste it when it, it can have a very positive impact. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. The way we're going to win over the long term is not just militarily. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure and have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. Stay tuned for politics and religion. How close do you think we are to one world government right now? Now, before you decide, listen to this article. Britain urges global deal on bank tax. Britain stepped up its push for a global tax on financial transactions Monday as part of of broad plans to reform the banking sector following the financial crisis amid concerns that the U.S. may act alone. Prime Minister Gordon Brown insisted that his proposal for an international levy on financial transactions are gathering support around the world. Okay, now let's make sure we understand what we're saying here. Gordon Brown, Prime Minister of Great Britain, is proposing that there be a global tax passed. Now, this is not new to those of us who follow this on an ongoing basis because we've known for a long time that the one-worlders have been salivating over a global tax. They have been attempting way back since in the early 1970s to push a method of global taxation. Now, here's their logic. They want the United Nations to be a bona fide one world government. It cannot be as long as it depends on the charity of nations to supply its money. Because if it gets too radical or does something that powerful nations do not want it to do, then all the nations have to do is turn off the spigot on the financial supply and the United Nations, the global government, is hamstrung. So they don't want to tolerate that. What they have sought for a long time are independent sources of revenue. They want to pass some kind of a global taxation system. Well, here we have the leader. Now, get this, ladies and gentlemen, the leader of one of the big five, the five nations that have veto power, only five in the whole world. Great Britain is one of them. He is openly, unabashedly promoting to put a tax on everybody in the whole world, a global tax. Now, they are determined they are going to have this global tax, and they keep prodding, they keep pushing, they keep probing, trying to find a way to get it done. Now, this particular tax is very close to what's been called the Tobin tax, the prime minister has pressed the idea of a so-called Tobin tax, but said nations could also consider an insurance scheme. The word scheme always uh, frightens me. Aimed at preventing a repeat of the huge state bailouts of banks caused by the financial crisis. A Tobin tax was originally proposed in 1971 by Nobel Prize winning economist James Tobin as a means of reducing speculation in global markets. But Tobin himself later doubted his own idea was workable. On Monday, meanwhile, Brown told a press conference, there is a very big risk that if we don't take the action that is necessary, here's the scare factor here, there's a big risk if we don't take the action necessary, sometimes very controversial, that banks will relapse into what they were before, taking reckless risk at the expense of the customers. Now, there's the fear factor. But you know all the customers have to do? Do due diligence on their bank and take their business elsewhere. Let the bank go bankrupt. I mean, that's what everybody else does if they are foolish in their investments and in their business management, you go bankrupt because you didn't take care of business. And 
That's probably what should have happened to a lot of the banks, but they were supposedly too big to fail. And the reason they were too big to fail is because we let them get too big by two things. By taking the controls off the size of banks, used to, they could only bank within certain geographical areas, but we took the controls off of them and the American government refused to use their monopoly busting powers. And so right now they're closing down all the little big banks. Are you seeing these notices? I don't know whether you go to the Drudge Report, but if you go there uh, every Friday or every Monday, they'll have a little list of all the banks that were shut down over the weekend. They always do it over the weekend. They can shut down on Friday, be back open on Monday under a bigger bank's control. They've been doing this every weekend. What's going on here? We're moving all the power to the big banks. We need some monopoly busting, some serious monopoly busting. Do you have?